Uh, I am Aladdin Halhuli from the Mechatronics Engineering Department at the uh, German Jordan University. Uh, I'm going to present uh, with my colleague uh, Dr. Ayman Shara uh, the preventive maintenance and troubleshooting of pneumatic and hydraulic systems. My part will be uh, the introduction for fluid power components uh, and circuits and uh, my colleague will uh, continue on the preventive uh, maintenance and troubleshooting. Actually, uh, my work in uh, microsystems, more in micro pumps. So as you can see here, this is the traditional uh, vein pump. But we, what you can see here are a micro pumps of uh, a small size. Here, the size of this pump is six, six millimeter in size. And here is nine millimeter in size. And I just uh, want to make it uh, for you to see uh, that also there's a micro hydraulic, <coughs> hopefully, uh, systems that can be realized uh, in the next future. Here just uh, what uh, we call a synchronous micro pump, where we can control the movement of magnets inside the micro channels in order to uh, make some uh, flow, very small quantities for hopefully uh, in the future, some of the uh, biological and biomedical applications. So going back to our uh, topic, uh, first I will introduce the fluid power, then the components, and as we can see here, fluid power in general is a term that was created to include the generation, control, and application of smooth and effective power of pumped or compressed fluids, since we know for hydraulic systems, we need pumps for pneumatic systems, we need the compressors. Uh, and if we look here to these two figures, we have here a mechanical uh, system where we can see the multiplication of the force with the length arm can multiplicate the force. Because force multiplied by the uh, linkage uh, distance at equilibrium position is equal to the other uh, weight multiplied by the linkage. So we can multiplicate the width by controlling the distances here. Now the same can be done for a hydraulic systems, but here through controlling the area of the system. So as we can see here, if we now uh, apply a force in a small area, then it can be transferred to a larger area, double or treble or fourth order, according to the area ratio. Because the force is the pressure multiplied by the area. In this case, we get now one of the most important advantages of hydraulic systems is the multiplication of force through controlling the areas. So in general, we have different advantage, not only the multiplication of forces, but also the simplicity. In comparison also with the uh, mechanical systems, the mechanical, for example, gears uh, or uh, mechanical uh, links, we cannot transfer power for a long distance. So we are limited in space. But with hydraulic and pneumatic systems, we can work with long distances because we are pumping fluid through pipes and according to the uh, efficiency and the power produced by these pumps, we can now uh, control a system. Even we have a lot of advantage, sure we have uh, problems because as you know, uh, fluid power systems or hydraulics or uh, air do not have uh, a confined uh, shape. So they should have, now uh, for hydraulic systems, they should have a tank, a uh, piping system of a strong piping system because if we, if we are working in a high pressures, we should try to avoid, avoid leaks. Even in some cases, we cannot avoid any foreign uh, matters because they reduce the efficiency, any chemical actions which may uh, cause corrosion and then reduce the uh, lifetime of such systems. Now basically, we can here uh, look 
to this diagram. It's just a pneumatic, uh, uh, a basic hydraulic uh, circuit. It consists of first the hydraulic tank, a pump, then you have a piping system. You have here a pressure relief valve, directional control valve, and you have here your uh, output is the cylinder uh, even retracting, holding, or uh, extending. I will talk about these uh, components later. So in comparison now with pneumatic systems, we have a new, any pneumatic system also the same. We have valves. We have also uh, cylinders, directional control valves. Uh, but the only difference, or the main difference, that uh, when we use air, for example, we don't need to have a tank. So we can use only a compressor instead of pump, and then take the uh, air from uh, the surrounding. Now, <coughs> hydraulics and pneumatics have a lot of applications, uh, as you, you can see here, even in airplanes or space shuttles, dumps, jacks, pneumatic systems also, as you can see here, in hammer, nailed guns, spray guns, or pneumatic rings. These are just selected examples of these applications. Now, one can say when to use a hydraulic and when to use a pneumatic system. Now, if we are talking about application that requires a speed, a medium amount of pressure, and only a fair accurate control, a pneumatic system can be used because a pneumatic systems means using gases. Okay, well, gases are compressible, so we are talking about a fairly accurate control. Now, if we need a high uh, on accurate control, then we can use a hydraulic systems. Also, if we are looking for high forces, we uh, should use a hydraulic systems. There are cases where we can combine both systems for a medium control of amount of pressure and um, uh, a combination of hydraulics and pneumatic systems can be used. Now, in order to understand any hydraulic system, we can see here what's called now a circuit diagram. Here is the tank, the pump, this represent this uh, circuit, the same. We have here a pressure relief valve. We have here a direction of control valve. These are the control valves. Here are the pressure relief valves, pumps, tanks, and here are the pistons. Now we can control, this is like a valve, direction and control valve. We can control now the movement of this valve in order to retract or extend or hold this uh, uh, the uh, loads or the pistons. I will begin just to uh, make a brief introduction to the uh, types of pumps. There are actually two uh, main uh, categories, the dynamic and the positive displacement pumps. The dynamic are what we know from uh, our homes, like the centrifugal pumps that pump fluid from uh, 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 now tanks uh, to the uh, upper uh, our uh, water reservoirs, uh, they are not self-priming. And, uh, and the other, the second type is the uh, pro axial propeller type. Mostly, such uh, pumps are uh, working at low. Uh, at high speed but low pressure in comparison to what's known as a positive displacement pumps. There is a lot of uh, uh, types of these kinds like the piston pumps, here we have the pistons, the vent pumps and the gear, uh, micro, uh, the gear uh, hydraulic pumps. These are the most used uh, types in fluid systems because they provide a high pressure. So these pumps provide a high pressure capability up to 12,000 PSI. They are small and compact. 
they have uh, a high volumetric efficiency, a small change in efficiency throughout the design pressure range, and great uh, flexibility of performance. The basic concept of such uh, pumps, as you can see here, that you have a piston and you have here a valves. These are uh, called a check, check valves, means that they allow fluid to flow only in one direction. As you can see here, if you are doing suction, then this valve will close uh, this port and this will open due to the uh, suction, then the fluid will get inside. Now, when the chamber is filled with fluid and you press it, as you can see here, now the pressure will close the inlet and open now the other port and uh, allow the fluid to transfer from the inlet now to the outlet. So this is the, the, this concept called a positive displacement because you have now a defined displacement. So in each stroke you have constant volume of fluid that, trans, that uh, transfer from the inlet to the outlet. If we look now to the uh, efficiency, there is what's called a volumetric efficiency. So these are main uh, parameters that any engineer should know when wo working with the hydraulic systems. Okay, if we are talking now about volumetric efficiency, then the actual flow rate produced by the pump divided by theoretical flow rate produced by the pump. The theoretical flow rate assume that during the piston movement, there's no leakage. But this doesn't exist because you have always clearances between the moving piston and the cylinder, okay? Mm -hmm. Then the measured or the actual flow rate is expected to be less. If we look to different now positive displacement pumps, we can see that the uh, gear pump has uh, a volumetric efficiency of 80 uh, to 90, and the piston pump is the largest of 90 to 98. The gear pump is normally used for high viscous, but also the piston pump can be used. All of them are uh, suitable for uh, high viscous fluids, mostly, because they are not, uh, the positive assessment pump just transfer fluid that come in and out, okay? even at higher pressures, okay? But if you have a higher viscosity, then you have less leakage, okay? Lower viscosity, more leakage. You know, this uh, means increasing the viscosity would increase the volumetric efficiency, okay? Now, the second thing is the uh, mechanical efficiency so we have uh, first the volumetric second the mechanical and as you can see the power produced by pump assuming no leakage divided power delivered to the pump now we are talking about power previously we were talking about flow rates uh, so uh, or the torque leakage the power produced by a pump is the pressure difference multiplied by the flow rate theoretical and the delivered by the pump is the rotational speed omega multiplied by the torque. Now, the most important thing here is the overall efficiency, which is the multiplication of the volumetric and the mechanical uh, efficiencies. So these are general terms that should uh, monitor when one uh, going to select a pump. Now here we can see uh, with viscosity, so changing the viscosity, we can see here this an increase, okay, in the volumetric efficiency. Now, if we are talking at, uh, on the overall efficiency, so we have an optimal point where the viscosity has an effect, okay? But for the volumetric efficiency, it increases with increasing the uh, viscosity. Generally, if you are going to select now a pump, you should look what are your requirements and monitor now this characteristic curve. Each 
pump has a characteristic curve as you can see also here here is the efficiency what's the efficiency of the pump at different rotational pump input speeds the rotational speeds and uh, at over here is the overall efficiency at 3000 for example psi here you can see 5000 psi here then this is the volumetric overall efficiency but here is the volumetric efficiency also at different uh, applied pressures here just another uh, presentation also of the pump performance curves now I listed here just some of uh, well-known uh, positive displacement pumps like external gear internal gear vein axial piston and radial piston pumps as we can see here that the axial piston pump has the largest uh, overall efficiency it has a high a high pressures uh, or pressure range between 1200 to 3000 uh, uh, sorry uh, 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 revolution per minute rotation speeds to up to 3000 revolution per minute and pressures up to 12000 uh, PSI. So I, I was talking uh, about pumps. Now, another important element in a hydraulic circuit is the valves. They are the control element uh, in the uh, hydraulic system. So we have here a pressure relief valve and the directional control valve. I will uh, just try to talk about the, there is a types of valves. So we are talking about directional control valve, flow control valves. Here we can control the direction of the movement of the piston. Here we can control the speed of uh, our uh, piston or cylinder. And here we can control the pressure control valve, our system pressure, the maximum pressure. Uh, where the system can sustain. These are just symbols how to, uh, to uh, present a hydraulic uh, direction control valve for a hydraulic circuit. Here just also an, a presentation as we can see here we have here now we are loading uh, retracting our cylinder then as you can see here, the pump pumps the fluid from this direction. So it, the flow will come from this side and it will retract. In case of extension, we should move the uh, direction relief bar to a second place. Now here, as you can see here in the middle. So here, if we, if we are talking, we have now three positions. The first position is for retracting. The second is for holding. So all of the uh, valve ports are closed, no more flow of uh, fluid, and the uh, load or the piston will hold in position at this point. Then this, the last is to extend the cylinder also by moving now the direction uh, control valve to the right, uh, to the left envelope. Now this movement can be manually done, mechanically, or electrically. So there's a lot of methods or number of methods that can be used uh, in this case. As I said before, the direct pressure relief valve or the pressure relief valve used to control the maximum pressure in the system and it is a maximum load uh, that uh, can work uh, against uh, the load. Now here, We have a spring, and through the uh, changing the stiffness of the spring, one can now control the pressure, uh, the system pressure, the maximum system uh, pressure. So the last here in our circuit is the cylinder itself. As you know, uh, the hydraulic cylinder, now we have now a hydraulic pump, piping, val control valving, now hydraulic cylinders. Now if we talk about hydraulic there's two types of hydraulic cylinders, linear or rotational. You have a, a hydraulic motor or a linear uh, actuator. Now if we are talking about hydraulic motors, 
we have also two types of hydraulic motors. Limited rotation motor, this means the motor rotate for a certain angle between uh, zero to, uh, or 270 degree or 90 degree according to the type or a continuous rotation hydraulic motors. These are just an examples of the limited rotation uh, actuators. The fluid come here uh, from this part, then uh, apply pressure on the vein, it can rotate then uh, up to only 90 uh, uh, 270 degree in this case because if you apply the f uh, pressure from this side it will move uh, counterclockwise if the, then you apply pressure from th from the other side then it will move clockwise the continuous rotation uh, actuators or what's called also hydraulic motors we have gear motors vein motors g rotor motors radial piston motors, inline piston motors. Actually, they are uh, similar to pumps, but instead of uh, changing now uh, mechanical energy into fluid power, now we apply the fluid power and change it in a, me uh, in a mechanical uh, form. The design of such systems, the uh, calculations uh, and every details are given also actually in our universities through lectures uh, and uh, what's called a pneumatic and hydraulic lab. So uh, we introduce all of these concepts from basics to uh, circuits to uh, programming. So here uh, the hydraulic things are also referred to hydraulic rams, hydraulic jacks, linear hydraulic actuators and hydraulic actuators. These are simple just a uh, figure of uh, large uh, diameters of such cylinders where pistons can move. So the hydraulic cylinders had different types, okay? We have single acting cylinders, so we have only one part. It returns, uh, there are, are different methods uh, such as uh, a, a spring return method. The second type is the a double acting uh, hydraulic cylinders where you can control uh, through a fluidic uh, the uh, retraction and extension of uh, the uh, cylinders and a double ended piston rod double acting cylinders so you have here loads on both sides so you can control uh, the movement uh, through uh, in both uh, sides also you can see here there is a welded body and a rod cylinders. Here the, uh, the body is welded and here is uh, screwed uh, through a connecting rods. Both types have limitations and maximum pressures and design parameters. I didn't go in details, I'm g just giving an overview about these components. Here we can see just a uh, the hydraulic circuit for a single acting uh, cylinder. As you can see here, we have a pump. Now it's closed. In this case, the pressure accumulates in the system. We have here a pressure relief valve. If the pressure now inside the system is larger than the uh, setting pressure, the uh, pressure relief valve settings, then it will open and allow the fluid to go back into uh, tank <coughs> now applying now force here or changing to the uh, lift envelope we can see that the pressure now will go through the valve into the piston and allow the movement of the piston if the piston are uh, is extended to the dead end the pressure will accumulate here if the pressure also greater than the uh, settings here, it will open until you move the, uh, the <coughs> valve to the right envelope. Okay, in this case, the pressure here will uh, be the atmospheric pressure. Then according to the spring force, the spring will return the cylinder to its initial position due to the stiffness, the spring stiffness. So designing this means what we should uh, be worried about is the load carrying capacity 
of such a circuit, the extension speed to be fast, to be low according to application and the detraction speed. From that, we should be worried about the uh, pump itself, flow rate, pressure head type, which type of these pumps suitable, the, the cost, the pressure relief valve, what's the cracking pressure, the full open pressure, the size, and the spring of uh, the uh, of the cylinder itself and the uh, spring of the uh, of the cylinder how it, uh, about its initial compression and stiffness this will improve studying this well will improve the efficiency and the operating cost of our system reduce the size and weight increase the safety improve the functionality reliability and will reduce the pollution and environment effects. This is just a second example on double acting cylinder. So in, in this case, you can control the movement between here extension, holding and retracting by changing now the position of the uh, direction control valve. Here just an example of such circuits. Uh, which was uh, which is used also uh, for punching operation so if you are going to do a punching and you need first uh, uh, the piston will move certain displacement without the requirement for any load when you are near to do punching you need a huge uh, force so you can operate your system in two states first to be fast until getting close to the surface and then very uh, slow, but with a high pressure. In this case, you have what's called a double pump hydraulic system. You have here a low flow pump and a high flow pump, and you can now connect the hydraulic circuit to allow this function. The second is what's called a two-handed uh, safety system. This means if you are working in an industry and uh, <coughs> you are operating a dangerous or uh, would like to be safe you can now put what's called two-handed system that you have two valves and your system will not be operated unless both are pressed so if you press only one of these okay there will be no action if you press both then there will be an action either retraction or uh, extension. This is just for safety purposes uh, in industry. <coughs> so uh, I would like to invite my colleague Dr. Ayman to continue uh, in, in uh, troubleshooting and preventive maintenance. Thank you for your attention. <coughs>